Good evening. I'd like to call to order the seventh meeting of the 2016-2017 Common Council. Will the clerk please read the quote for the day? Thank you, Mayor. We cannot accomplish all that we need to do without working together. Thank you. Please, uh, would the clerk please call the roll? There are 14 present. Um, Alderman Damro is excused. Alderman Herman is not excused. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes from our last council meeting. Alderman Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move approval. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Item uh, 4.1 is resignation. City Attorney. There's one resignation, uh, Don Silvis uh, from Mayor's International Committee. Alderman Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move to accept the resignation. Second. Thank you for that motion and second. All those in favor of receiving uh, the accepting the resignation, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Next item is uh, mayor's appointments. City attorney. Uh, this appointment uh, from the mayor submitting the following appointments for your consideration for the mayor's neighborhood leadership cabinet for the Indiana Corridor Neighborhood Association. Uh, Dean Decker as the primary, Peter Shalom as the alternate uh, for a term to expire on April 30, 2017. Those appointments will lie over till our next meeting. Next is a public forum. City Clerk. Yes, we have one this evening. Uh, Mike Brunette, is Mike here? Yes. And Mike, can you give me your home address, please? 1925 South 26th Street. Okay, and you will have five minutes. All right. Um, I, I'm here to basically say I'm very excited about what's going on behind the scenes with the armory and that, and although Going into it, I didn't see a construction project as necessary, still don't, and whatever. It's very cool, and I'm glad that finally we have all this money for that, and I think we actually have a really good choice, and whatever you're doing seems to be pretty good. And it's like, but my bigger issue right now is our ever-growing propaganda TV network, which you would know as WSCS TV8, and it's like, which I'm, which is very proud when, at their committee meeting when they're asking for, for new equipment on the budget of going up and covering events in Green Bay, which I don't really understand why our city is on the road in Green Bay and pulling itself off as a somewhat news and commercial station, which is kind of not the role of the city, especially when you're divesting of the whole departments and such. But on the same note, on uh, TV, since you are building such a juggernaut with the infrastructure and uh, very expensive cameras and stuff, and it is public access, my big question in general, and I looked into this before, is how does somebody actually get a slot on public access TV, and if somebody could help me out with that? Because being that it is public access, I would think that the public should be able to access that and I've looked in it before and kind of hit a few closed doors on it and I'm not and I'm basically throwing it out here because I don't know who to talk to and that's really all I have on that subject other than you know I mean once again you're, you're proving it's quite a bit of money and the way they have it written up and everything that they want all this advertising revenue and this and that and it just blows my mind, I mean, because we actually have news sources in town, I mean, like them or not, but it's what it is, and when the city is doing its own news, it's pretty much the definition of propaganda, which is literally the same word as public relations by the same person. And if somebody could help me out, my email address is 
I-S-H-E-V-E-G-A-S at gmail.com. And I'd just like some information on it. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. That's it for this evening. Thank you. Next, we'll go on to mayor's announcements. I just want to say that we had a great 4th of July celebration. I uh, think that uh, we owe our sponsors uh, a, a big thank you. That's Johnsonville Sausage for sponsoring the Big Bang Celebration, Festival Foods for sponsoring the fireworks, Wisconsin Bank and Trust for sponsoring the, the parade, uh, C's for taking over the cardboard boat regatta, um, the Venetian Night Parade that was organized by the Sheboygan Yacht Club, Coolest Cardiology's Freedom Run, and the Sheboygan Theater Company for their performance in Fountain Park, and Team Elevate for the King of the uh, Beach uh, Volleyball Tournament. Uh, everybody uh, working together with the city and our Tourism Bureau who manages this for us pulled off an amazing event, so thank you to everyone and especially to those sponsors. Next, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Alderman Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I would uh, move to accept and file all the reports of officers, accept and adopt all resolutions, and pass all, I'm sorry, all the reports of committee, and pass all resolutions and ordinances. Second. Thank you for that motion and support, and that'll include items 2.2 .2 through 2.17. Alderman Jose. Mr. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to uh, take 2.16 out and address it separately. Is there any objection? Seeing none, then we'll deal with 2.16 first. 2.16 is an RC by the Public Protection and Safety Committee to use and refer General Ordinance Number 7 of 1617 by Alderman Jose, creating Section 70-117 of the Municipal Code as to make an offense against public morals and decency for someone to taunt, tease, or encourage another individual to commit suicide and recommends that the document be placed on file. Under discussion. Alderman Jose, did you want to continue? Yes. Please go ahead. Um, I had some discussions a few weeks ago with the city attorney, <clears throat> and at that time he told me his opinion was that it could be improperly applied the ordinance, if passed as written, that is, a, an officer could improperly use the ordinance, and there could be cases where those cases would be thrown out as unconstitutionally overreaching. However, I would argue that this the disorderly conduct ordinance, which has been on the books for many decades, can also be unconstitutionally applied. If I was a black activist and I got up with a bullhorn and I started saying, Sheboygan police, pigs in a blanket, fry them like bacon. Arguably, a police officer could arrest me for disorderly conduct, but that would be wrong because he would be violating my constitutional rights. So the existing disorderly conduct ordinance, we keep it on the books, <clears throat> despite the fact that it could be applied unconstitutionally. And I don't. my understanding is that the argument against the passage of this ordinance is the possibility that it could be applied uh, unconstitutionally. And I don't think that's, a, I think it's a good tool to give police to officers. And as long as they exercise that tool correctly, it's another asset that they, that they can employ, just like the disorderly conduct ordinance. Thank you for those comments. Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Attorney Adams, I saw within the last couple of days that I think it was a Wisconsin Supreme Court or some court made a decision having to do with this, uh, rep this uh, report of committee that Alderman Jose has brought in. Are you familiar with that? Have you seen anything? Yes, yeah, so th there is a Minnesota Supreme Court decision that uh, declared a similar ordinance, or actually it was a state statute in Minnesota's case, uh, to be unconstitutional. Uh, as applied in that particular case. The issue, of course, though, is, is that the as applied dealt with the real purpose of the ordinance uh, as it does here. And so that's, that's really the concern, is that as applied, it would be unconstitutional. And in the other areas where it may not be unconstitutional, we already have uh, statutes and ordinances that, that, would, uh, are, that could be used by the police to, to cover this. Thank you. Is there any other discussion on the motion? I thought they made the motion and seconded it to pass. 
Adam and Jose made the motion to. Who seconded the motion? To pass this. So, Chuck, we, we don't have a motion on the floor then? You have a motion, you don't have a second. Uh, you, can, you, call for, you can call again for a second, and if it doesn't come, it would die for a lack of a second. Is there a second to this motion? I'm gonna second it. Okay, we have a second. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Could you explain exactly what we're voting on now? Uh, a vote uh, for the motion. This is a motion to pass, correct? No, this is a motion. Well, the motion that's here is to accept and adopt to file this. Okay, so if you vote for this, you're filing it. If you vote against it, then we'd have to put another motion on the floor as a positive motion and, uh, and vote on that at a separate vote. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Alderman Thiel. Sir, this one here is the vote to file it. If you say aye, you're voting to file it. If you're voting nay, then another motion would we have to put on the floor to pass it. Thank you. Okay. The clerk, please call the roll. I'm going to do it the old-fashioned way for this one. Uh, Bellinger? Aye. Bitters? Aye. Boren? Aye. Damerel? I'm sorry, he's not here. Donahue? <coughs> aye. Strawn? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Jose? Aye. Lassard? Aye. Lewandowski? Aye. Rob? Aye. Schneider? Aye. Thiel? Aye. Presser? Aye. Wolf? Aye. 13 ayes, 1 no. Motion passes. Then we have before us the remaining di uh, items, <laughs> items 2.2 through 2.17 minus 2.16. Before us, is there any discussion on any of those documents? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for the consent agenda? Thirteen eyes, one no. Motion passes. Uh, under reports of officers, items 3.1 through 3.4 will be referred to various committees. <clears throat> under resolutions, item 4.1 is a resolution by Alderman Donahue authorizing executing a memorandum of understanding between the Town of Wilson, the City of Sheboygan, and the Sheboygan Water Utility regarding installation of a water main. Alderman Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. As an initial matter, I move to suspend the rules. Second. Do we have a motion to suspend? Is there any uh, problem? Alderman Bellinger. Thank you. I, I, I don't uh, have a, an issue with the suspension, but I guess I would just like to know why we're, we're suspending this. What is, is there something of urgency regarding this so that we're suspending it? Thank you. Alderman Donahue. Um, thank you. I think either um, Attorney Adams could answer that, and I believe Mr. Trueblood is in the audience, and he could explain the nature of the construction timelines. And <coughs> Mr. Chupalev, would you like to step up to the podium? Did you want to open up, City Attorney? Well, I can start while, while Joe is on his way up. Uh, the reason for uh, the quick action is because the work simply needs to begin. Uh, it's being timed with the county's work in South Business Drive. Uh, it was delayed because the town of Wilson objected uh, to uh, the utilities request to, to lay the uh, the main uh, and we had to go in front of the Public Service Commission and, uh, and eventually uh, it was settled but uh, only in time to get it in front of you uh, today and we need to suspend the rules okay thank you Does that cover it then yes okay thank you very much very good then I would need to pass the resolution second Okay, we, thanks for the motion and support. We have the resolution before us. Is there any discussion on the motion? Alderman Boren. Thank you. Uh, I read over the document uh, earlier today, and, and I know it's a water main, and the water is being extended out there for uh, fire protection, and I forgot what the other one was. Uh, this, this in no way, uh, the town of Wilson has no ownership in this as far as 
possible uh, connections to properties in the in the town of Wilson. This is strictly for city properties. That's what I got out of this. Is that is that true, that Attorney is Adams? Correct. Okay, thank you. It merely needed to go through town property because of the way the borders are down there. Thank you. Oh, the Mrs. Slyer, did you have a question? I do. Um, they have not acquired all the property they need yet to go move forward with this project, so I guess I'm still looking to acquire I'm not sure to what you're referring about. They haven't. I think you may be thinking about a different project. The, this is try. this is just simply a s small section that's going through uh, the town of Wilson on South Business Drive, where the where the county is doing some resurfacing, and so it's so that they don't have to tear up the road a second time. Does that answer your question, Alderman Lassard? Um, Mr. Trueblood, can you help us out with any further explanation? Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council Members. Um, the project is uh, entirely in right-of-way, so it would actually be in South Business Drive. Um, there are lands uh, south of Riverdale that have been in the city for a number of years but have never had water main in front of them yet. So when we became aware that the county was going to reconstruct um, Highway OK or South Business Drive, uh, we uh, thought this would be the time to get that water main in ahead of that reconstruction. Thank you very much. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? <clears throat> Thirteen eyes, one no. Motion passes. Items uh, four point two and four point three will lie over, and items four point four through four point seven will be referred to various committees. Under reports of committees, item five point one is an RC by law and licensing to whom was re referred pursuant to RO number twenty seven of sixteen seventeen by the city clerk various license applications and recommends that the beverage operator's license 1238 be denied based upon her failure to accurately review all relevant convictions on the license application, her record of violations related to the license activity, and her record as a repeat law offender. Alderman Lassard. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Tiffany Lang, are you here today? Tiffany was invited to come to our committee on two separate occasions and did not come at either one. So the committee um, recommended that we deny our license and all were in agreement of that. Alderman Lassard, could you please uh, make the motion on this? <coughs> oh, I am so, so. That's a friendly motion. I'd like to make a motion that all the report of committees be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any more discussion on the motion? Seeing none, would the clerk please call the roll? <clears throat> 13 ayes, one no. Motion passes. Item 5.2 is an RC by law and licensing to whom was reserved, re referred pursuant to RO number 27 of 1617 by the city clerk various license application and recommends that beverage operator's license 1227 be denied based upon his failure to accurate reveal a relevant convictions on his license, his record of violations related to the licensed activity, his record as a repeat law offender, and his failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderman Lassard. Thank you. Is Justin Hill here? Justin was invited to our committee on two separate occasions and did not appear at either one, and the committee voted to deny his license unanimously. We also need a motion on this one. I make a motion that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Uh, 
yes. Okay. Thirteen eyes, one no. Motion passes. Item 5.3 is an RC by law and licensing to whom was referred RO number 27 of 1617 by the city clerk submitting various license applications. It recommends that taxi cab driver's license number 0854 be denied based upon his record of violations related to the license activity, his record as a repeat law offender, and his failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderman Lassard. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion, please proceed. Is Robert Prey here today? Robert was invited to our committee on two different occasions and didn't appear at either one. The committee voted to deny his license. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Thirteen eyes, one no. Motion passes. Item 5.4 is an RC by law and licensing to whom is reserved pursuant to RO number 46 of 1617 by the city clerk various license application recommends that taxi cab driver's license application 5224 be denied based upon his failure to accurate reveal all relevant convictions on his license application, his record of violations related to the licensed activity, and his record as a repeat law offender. Alderman Lassard. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion? Yes, I believe Michael's here. Would you, would you want to come up? <coughs> Michael appeared before our committee and brought with him probably one of the most outstanding young men that I've ever met at the tender age of 12 or 13, who answered all the questions of the committee for Michael. And it was our consensus as a committee that Michael just isn't um, prepared at this time in his life to take on a taxi cab license. There's concern for his ability to speak for himself and his actions on his own. So our committee denied this application. Thank you, Michael. Would you like to address the council? The city clerks was already aware of all my violations from the beginning. They had copies of my driver's license, everything. So they were already aware of everything. Okay. Did you did you want to address the council on any other issues? Well, I wish the council reconsider. Can you pull the mic over so we can? I wish the council reconsider. <coughs> okay. All right, Michael. Thank you very much. Thank you, you sir. Have have a seat. Is there any other discussion on the motion? Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Alderman Lassard, could you kind of give us a synopsis of the, uh, the violations that the committee was concerned with and did you get any recommendation from the police department? Um, I'm gonna to have to refer to our city attorney for the, the items that weren't listed. We had lengthy discussion. Um, <coughs> my memory doesn't serve me as to what the exact recommendation of the police department was. But in speaking with um, Michael, it was very difficult for him to be able to answer any of the questions that we asked him. This um, wonderful young man did most of the talking for him. Michael has had a taxi cab license in the past and some of the infractions that he has were while he was driving a taxi. And um, we just didn't have a comfort zone as to his ability to be able to perform this task in a manner that would keep our constituents safe. Thank you for those comments, City Attorney. As to the uh, violations, uh, th there was a range of violations ranging from traffic type violations like a, a seatbelt violation and registration violations. There, was, uh, there were a couple of moving violations. And then some more serious violations. He had a conviction for um, uh, basically putting someone in danger, uh, recklessly putting somebody in danger. Uh, he had some issues related to his uh, property, uh, including um, uh, violation of 
the rules uh, related to uh, when, the, when the, the police did a chronic nuisance violation and he did not uh, respond uh, appropriately to those, uh, did not uh, obey uh, the uh, chronic nuisance order that he himself uh, participated in uh, putting together. Uh, the police department, uh, uh, Sergeant McKay was present uh, and uh, did indicate uh, that the police department would have uh, significant uh, concerns about uh, Mr. Gommer given their uh, uh, contact uh, with him. It is true that Mr. Gommer had had uh, a license in the past, but this is a new license at this point. Uh, he uh, lost his license at a previous uh, time, and so uh, today we are dealing with it as a new application and not as a renewal. The reason that's important is because if it were a renewal, he would have some level of property right in the license. Uh, he does not because it's new, uh, and typically what uh, the advice is, is it's at the new application stage that you deal with these issues and tell people maybe you need to wait a few years uh, and make sure that there've been, there's been some time passed where you can show your ability to follow the laws uh, before uh, the committee will uh, grant. That was kind of the thinking, I think, that was expressed by the committee members at, at the meeting. Thank you very much for those comments. Is there any other discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Thirteen eyes, one no. Uh, the motion is passed and the uh, license is denied. Item 5.5 .5 is an RC by law and licensing to who is referred resolution number 41 of 1617 by Alderman Lewandowski to rescind the general ordinance number 1 of 1516, reducing the number of Sheboygan aldermen from the current 16 down to 10 for the 2018-2019 council year and instead hold a binding referendum to allow the citizens of Sheboygan to vote on this and recommends that the document be placed on file. Alderman Lassard. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Thank you for that motion. Is there a second? second. We have a second. Uh, under discussion, Alderman Lewandowski. Yes, I would like to make a substitute motion and have this referred to <coughs> committee of the whole. City Attorney. You've got a motion to file and now you've got a motion to refer. Um, heard a second yet on the motion to refer second so you can you can proceed on the motion to refer my recollection is that a motion to refer takes precedence is there any discussion is there, is there any discussion on a motion to refer For me? Is, is there any discussion on a motion to refer? No pressure. Oh, oh, that. Oh, you're asking me. <laughs> yes. Um, there can be discussion on a motion to refer. Yes. Okay. Is there any discussion on this motion? Alder Alderman Jose. Um, yeah, I'm in support of uh, Alderman Lewandowski's proposal to uh, rescind the ordinance, reducing the common counts from 16 to 10. Um, you're going to find out in a week or so, Mr. Mayor, that I'm going to tell you I'm going to have to resign from any committee that meets before 6 p.m. Uh, because of a job I've taken. When I was elected to this position, it wasn't explained that this was only for the elite that, that could choose their hours, their work hours. I thought this was a, the alderman's position was a position for people that um, if, you, if you worked a job, you could still be an alderman. But... Uh, my position I'm in now, I, I work until almost 5 o'clock. There's no way I can get certain places before 6 o'clock. Uh, by reducing the common council from 16 to only 10 aldermen, you are, are already problems with having enough aldermen to serve on the existing committees. It exacerbates the problem of be, be, people being able to meet the different committee uh, times. And uh, 
it, uh, it's going to exacerbate the number of phone calls and issues that the individual aldermen have to uh, deal with. Thank you for those comments. Alderman Donahue. Um, thank you, Mayor. I would just ask uh, Attorney Adams to um, explain to us the uh, issues that he sees with respect to the uh, proposed ordinances it's drafted. Yes. And the, I would assume those concerns would transfer to committee as a whole. Correct. So uh, the uh, proposed uh, ordinance as it's drafted is, is faulty. A um, couple of problems. First of all, uh, it purports to repeal an ordinance, but um, it is a charter ordinance, and it would require a charter ordinance to repeal our current ordinance. Second, the body of uh, the uh, ordinance itself, uh, and really it's a, it's, it's a resolution, um, does not, it, it starts out with whereas is, <coughs> which indicate you know, why it might be that uh, the older person would want to do what he <coughs> wants to do, but then there is no substantive section to the resolution explaining what it is that's actually going to happen. It's a series of whereas's and uh, uh, not much more. Uh, so as it currently exists, uh, the resolution or ordinance or whatever you call it um, would not do anything regardless of whether you passed it or not tonight or referred it to committee and the committee discussed it. Thank you for that explanation. Now, any other discussion? Okay, again, the motion is uh, to refer to the committee of the whole. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. 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 I think the nays have it. So then we're uh, again voting on the main motion, which is to accept and, and adopt the committee report. Is there any discussion uh, on that motion? Okay, seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Ten eyes, four noes. Motion passes. Item 5.6 is an RC by Strategic Fiscal Planning to whom is referred resolution number 45 of 1617, direct referral by Alderperson Donahue authorizing the issuance of the City of Sheboygan's 2016 Strategic Plan Community Survey and recommends that the resolution be passed. Alderman Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I would move to accept, adopt, and put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion, Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. I had a chance to read the survey, and I thought for the most part it was pretty well done. Uh, could Alderman Donahue, uh, could you tell us how this uh, survey is going to be issued and by what means social media or U.S. mail or how it's going to be distributed? Thank you. Um, thank you. There is actually a fairly extensive plan to um, to uh, put the uh, survey out into the community, but I think Mr. Hoffman might address uh, that process and why he thinks this is an important issue. City Administrator. Uh, uh, regarding the distribution of the survey, um, the manner in which uh, citizens uh, of the city of Sheboygan uh, will learn and ultimately hopefully participate is a similar uh, informational campaign uh, that uh, Department of Planning and Development uses. We will be relying upon uh, our own, you know, our own website, our Facebook, our Twitter. Uh, posters have already been um, printed to be placed uh, on our transit uh, vehicles. Uh, we've contacted uh, different uh, uh, nonprofits as well as uh, school district uh, to place information on their electronic message board signs. Uh, the city, of course, has a couple electronic message board signs. Um, we're going to be working with uh, 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 the uh, water and wastewater utility. Uh, they have access as well and a separate uh, uh, website uh, for their um, customers. Uh, unfortunately, the water bill uh, and sewer bill uh, went out uh, recently and, and is 
result, we won't be able to use that as, as an option. Uh, the intent is to keep uh, the period open until the end of the month. Um, and depending on the, the level of response, possibly hold it open for another week. Um, but the strategy is to uh, hit hard uh, as far as sort of a campaign, uh, getting people aware uh, of the survey. Uh, we've also touched base with our senior activity center director as well as the library director that uh, computers will uh, be located uh, and uh, promoted that residents that may not have access to the internet can go to those two locations and, and fill out the survey. Uh, this is a, a online, an internet-based uh, survey um, um, website. Uh, the goal is that uh, tabulation will be minimal, if not uh, non-existent. Uh, uh, again, there was, there's really no funds associated with this project, uh, and so to dedicate staff to uh, take paper copies and, and input each of those, uh, we really have limited options or opportunities for that, so we're pushing uh, for residents to utilize uh, an op the online uh, method. Uh, this will be a critical document for you as uh, we eventually schedule a retreat to look at our existing um, strategic plan and uh, we're working with a facilitator to assist. A management team will be invited. Um, uh, we have not identified any potential dates. Uh, we will be <coughs> in contact with you uh, for some time in August. And again, this will be additional information that we hope will be helpful for you as we uh, look at our existing strategic plan and uh, consider an update. Thank you for that information. Does that answer your question, Alderman Boring? Uh, yes, but I'd just like to follow up. Uh, for the people that don't have access to a computer or have computer skills, are there going to be people available at the senior center or at the library to walk the people through this? And what about, what about shut-ins that people that cannot get out that do not have access to a computer or skills? Uh, for those that uh, are shut-ins uh, that don't have access to uh, either the Senior Citizen Act, uh, Senior Activity Center or the library, uh, we, will, uh, we will deliver those. Okay, good. And they should contact, who should, they, who should the citizens contact, your office or who should they contact to make those arrangements? Uh, my office, please. Okay. Okay, Alderman uh, Trester. I opened the survey, but they wouldn't let me fill it out. So I don't know whether it's certain <coughs> programs or certain computers, or but mine would not let me do anything with it. I was able to read it, but that's all. Uh, are you referring to the uh, survey that was included in, your, in, in the packet? I never Could, got a survey in a packet. Okay, because I'm not aware that the survey is live at this point, and I'm not aware that residents can actually start utilizing it. Well, how come some of the members of filled out the survey? I think the important thing is that you were able to read it and understand you know, the questions in it. I think that's all it was intended to do. And when it goes live, then you'll be able to go on the same site that all the residents are being directed to and then take the survey. Thank you. Any other discussion? Okay, then the motion's before us, so the clerk please call the roll. <coughs> 13 ayes, one no. Motion passes. Item 5.7 is an RC by law and licensing. To whom was referred General Ordinance Number 9 of 1617 by Alderperson Donahue, repealing and recreating Section 2 221 of the Municipal Code relating to normal working hours and recommends passing the ordinance. Alderman Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I would uh, move to um, accept, adopt, and put the um, resolution, I'm sorry, the ordinance upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion. Uh, Alderman Lassard. Yes, um, we did approve this um, to be uh, accepted and adopted, but since the time that this has happened till today, I, we've gotten some phone calls and some concerns, and 
my recommendation would have been, if allowed, to send it back to committee as well as salary and grievances for further discussion. Okay, is, there, is that a motion? Second. Is there a second? Second. Okay, the motion before us is to refer it back to the, um, the two committees for further discussion. Is there any, discuss any discussion on that motion? Uh, Alderman Boren? Well, the only question I had uh, was why it went to law and licensing in the first place. This seemed to, to me, at least from my experience on serving on salary and grievance, is an employee <coughs> issue, a uh, specific employee issue dealing with work conditions, hours, et cetera. Uh, I just felt it probably should have went to salary and grievance in the first place. Thanks for that point. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I, I guess I would just like um, <coughs> Um, Alderman Person Lassard to, to uh, give us an update of what the additional concerns are. Um, I'm not sure why it needs to be re-referred back to a committee when it, when it came out. So I, I just would like to know what those concerns are and if, if they were constituent phone calls, emails, or, or whatever they were. Thank you. Alderman Lassard. Yes, thank you. Um, there had been some phone calls from some employees that wanted to remain in anonymous in the situation and they're concerned because they feel that um, the chief administrator is going to change lunch hours to half hour and allow people to go home a half hour early. And just, we, I think we need to have more specificity as to what hours are going to be changed and for what reason. And that's why we're asking it to go back to committee for further discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alderman Bourne. It just in follow up to what Alderman Lassard said, uh, I also had a call from a uh, city employee today who was who was concerned about this uh, for for the reasons that uh, uh, Alderman Lassard mentioned about changing lunch hours and closing city hall early, and about uh, all departments <coughs> being covered during during uh, lunch breaks and that type of thing. So that's why I would support I would support sending it. Uh, if, if we have kind of a one committee rule and we had a choice, I'd rather have it go to salary and grievance, but I would support going to both back to law and licensing and salary and grievance if that's what the motion is. Thank you. Thanks for that suggestion. We'll go on to Alderman Heideman and maybe you can respond to whether or not you and the motioner would, would want to just send it to salary and grievances as well, but well, please proceed. That, that's correct. Uh, <laughs> whether it goes back to both committees, um, Again, I didn't. I, I still didn't under, uh, get the answer as to why it was referred to law and licensing and not salary agreements, because it is an employee issue. Uh, I serve on that committee, and I think uh, that's where it belonged in the first place. So, if I can get an explanation on why it would go to law and licensing instead of uh, uh, salary agreements, but again, I would go along with a dual referral if that committee wants to rediscuss it and have it as salary agreements. Yeah, it just came in. Uh, the clerk makes a lot of suggestions to me, and that's one that uh, I agreed with. And uh, we went to law and licensing, and at the last meeting there was no objection to that, so they had it on their agenda. So if the committee wants to follow through and send it back to that committee as well as put it on the agenda for salary and grievances, that's your option. Any other discussion? Okay, we have a, a motion for a dual referral to law and, uh, licensing and uh, salary and grievances. Uh, all, would the clerk, well, all, just do a voice, right? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Next item on the agenda is 5.8, which is an RC by law and licensing to whom was referred general ordinance number 10 of 1617 by Alderman Jose, excuse me, amending section 10-102 of the municipal code entitled retail class A licenses so as to increase the number of retail class A liquor licenses that may be issued by the city of Sheboygan and recommends passing the ordinance. Alderman Lassard. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the report of the committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion, Alderman Jose. This, this was discussed at the Law and Licensing Committee, and it was a consensus that uh, with all the development we've got going with the, the five housing projects, the uh, new businesses coming downtown, um, Myers redeveloping the Memorial Mall area, that 
we're running dangerously close where we only have one uh, liquor license left in the city and there's uh, some existing business that are expanding and are going to occupy potentially um, those licenses before Myers can ever get open and so, uh, we we didn't look too deeply into it but it appears that the number of licenses has not been increased in perhaps more than 30 years and so we're just uh, at the city attorney's advice we're not making a large increase we're simply increasing it by three licenses from the number of available licenses from 12 to 15. Thank you for those comments. Any other discussion? Uh, I'd like to ask the city attorney to uh, please describe what type of businesses this license would apply to. These are retail class A liquor licenses, so they are in essence liquor stores. Thank you very much. Alderman Bourne. Uh, has lawn licensing, uh, I guess I'm having trouble understanding the immediate urgency of this. Has there been a number of businesses uh, that have come forward that want these retail <coughs> liquor licenses? And I did receive a call from a uh, woman that lives on the north side <coughs> today, I think some of the aldermen did too, that said that she didn't feel that these Class A licenses were appropriate for her neighborhood, that there were apparently were enough licenses of, like that already in existence and she was concerned because it's a, a high crime neighborhood that she didn't think it was appropriate that any more Class A's be in that, in that neighborhood. Now I would suppose that law and licensing would have jurisdiction on that, but uh, I'm a little bit concerned with the urgency on this. If there's been so many people applying that we have to raise this now, uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm tending not to support it based on what I heard, heard from that constituent. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. I think there are two issues here, and one is uh, some applications that are on Geely Avenue, um, and that's going to be a separate determination as to what happens there. And then this issue of are we uh, in need of more licenses, and should we go from 12 up to 15? So that's the, the issue that we'll be voting on. Is there any other discussion? Alderman Lassard. Yes. Um, I think what has come before us has been a number of different people looking to open um, perhaps a grocery store with a liquor store in it in the projected as the downtown area gets larger. Um, we've had two people apply for liquor licenses. I mean, uh, for this to have liquor stores on Geely Avenue, one on 15th, one on 11th, and we have not made a decision regarding either one of those. And with Myers <coughs> coming into the picture, we felt that as a committee and um, in discussion with the city attorney that it would be a good idea that we increased it. That does not necessarily mean we're going to hand all three of them out, but we want to have the availability for any retailers that want to come into perhaps our newly developed areas. And I hope that everyone will support this. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Under discussion, Alderman Heidemann. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Uh, what's the total number of li liquor licenses we could have for a community? Is it above 15 or is 15, is that's where the bar is set? City Attorney? There is no limit. We're setting our own limit for this type of license. It's different for Class B. Okay. Thank you for those comments. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. So uh, I, I did receive a phone call, too, from a constituent this morning, and it's specifically related to the issue on Geely Avenue. And... Uh, uh, their concern with with that so uh, I just want to make sure that from, from what I'm understanding there's no uh, quid pro quo here that uh, we, we ex extend this to 15 and then that this these stores will be granted on Geely Avenue so that's they're completely unrelated Is that correct there there are two separate issues the if this gets approved there are more licenses to give away, but the, uh, I always <coughs> advise the committee that just because you have a license doesn't mean you have to grant it. You have every right to hold it in your hand and not issue it. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Alderman Donahue. Um, what is the cost uh, for a business to buy a Class A retail license? Do you I know? I don't know off the top of my head. Does the city clerk know? It's a minimum of about $600 a year. Thank you. Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I don't want to put the police chief on the spot, but uh, Chief Domogolski, does your department have any opinion on the expansion of these Class A licenses?
Good evening. I, I would essentially agree with what's been said. I think the, the importance is more the process and decision making about granting it to individual places. Is there a good business plan in place? Is it a good neighborhood? Uh, issues like that. That's really what needs to be considered. Thank you. Thank you very much for those comments. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? go back it was on the document I'm having some trouble getting back I'll vote aye twelve eyes two no's motion passes and then we'll go on to ordinances item 6.1 will be referred to the Public Protection and Safety Committee other matters City Attorney <laughs> I have no other matter. Oh, yeah, there is one. Uh, 7.1 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31, 2016, June 30, 2017, June 30, 2018. That will be referred to the Law and Licensing Committee. Um, next, we have a contemplated closed session. Alderman Donahue. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I would move to convene in closed session under the exemption provided in Section 1985 sub 1 sub e of the Wisconsin statutes for competitive and bargaining reasons require a closed session related to redevelopment opportunities in the 600 block of North, Sixth Street, uh, North 8th Street. Second. <coughs> Thank you for that motion and support. Would the clerk please call the roll for closed session. Missing a few here, Joel. We had six times the night where I voted in the. Okay, what is it? An I. And who else am I missing? Jim. I voted. I voted already. Yes. Okay. Fourteen eyes. Motion passes. We'll take a five minute recess and I'd just like to advise our TV viewers that this will be the end of our broadcast. The council will adjourn in closed session.